one million scientists and one million hours. So you just told me that would be two hours a week per scientist. So yeah, if we got a hundred, <laughs> if we got one million <laughs> scientists to spend two hours a week working on engaging with science policy, yeah, we would have a hundred million hours a year. Exactly. Working on that. And if we have that hundred million hours, what would we achieve? Well, you know the the. I, I, as you know, probably I also spend a bit of time at the European Commission, the other side of the fence, uh, trying to make policy. And one of the things that you see there is the difficulty to engage with scientists uh, for policy making and vice versa on a voluntary basis. Uh, you, yeah. can, you can, of course, commit studies and so on. Mm -hmm. But there is an enormous willingness to do more. And that's the one thing. So these initiatives, her idea there about uh, the 10% of the 10%, uh, 10 per, 1 million is 10%, yeah, yeah. would liberate an enormous amount of energy for scientists contributing to policy making. Secondly, we need it. And uh, we are facing enormous problems this, in this century, uh, which are not trivial, and where nope. we need to, to collaborate at a global scale. And it's actually what, the, the, the idea is that simple. You crowdsource the intelligence, uh, by, by appealing to 10% of the scientific population and by trying to bring them in into yep. uh, influencing the policy. Because otherwise it's a formal relationship. I am a policymaker, I commit a study. Mm -hmm. And this is the, what we, what the idea and what we try to develop is a much more voluntaristic approach uh, in terms of participating to policy. Yes, crowdsourcing the intelligence. Crowdsourcing That's the intelligence. A, nice, a nice way to say it. Um, so what you want to create is a culture of engagement interactive yeah and I, and I think the where it comes unstuck a little bit mm. is that scientists generally speaking go into science because they're passionate about what they do they want to change the world they can see that there's a need and that <coughs> the science can actually contribute to making a difference but we then work within institutions and within contexts where we are rewarded for a very certain narrow set of metrics so how much we're publishing how much yep. research grant True. funding we can bring in and we're not really at all rewarded or incentivized to put the time in that it takes to build those networks, to build bridges, to cross disciplines, to build that trust with those that are on the other side of the fence, if you like, making exactly. policies that impact society. Yeah. And that means that it becomes goodwill and it often means that you only actually get those that are very senior who are able to make that decision to, to do that and to, and to spend that time. So the idea really was around if we could change the context within which scientists are working and actually recognize it as a valuable thing for society and then incentivize scientists to do it, then we could um, actually get to a point where we're going to have a much broader set, set of science voices because you'll be enabling early career, mid-career and senior exactly. scientists. Yeah. You'll have a much broader range of disciplines involved um, and it, you'll, you'll be in a much better position to have that sort of ongoing dialogue. It's one yep. thing I noticed over the last two years is that often a scientist was sort of wheeled in, you know, oh my gosh, we've got a problem. What does the science say? Science, tell us what to do. Now help us. And yes. help us. Yeah. Rather than having scientists and science at the table in the decades that have come up to that, so that actually science insights and the way of science thinking is infused into how we make policy and how we make decisions. True. And, and what we go to science for and what questions we ask of it. And I think that would be the real game changer. If we could in, in, in invest now, yep. we would have this it's long engagement term for, long the, term. for the future. Yeah. How oh, wonderful. So how do you work together, the two of you? Yeah, Did you meet before? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. no in, in, in cyberspace, yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> of course, so this is no. the first time live. This That's is the good. first time. No, we, 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 it was actually by, by coincidence mm. because Ruth was uh, developing uh, some work with the World Economic Forum with engaging young scientists. And then we, as editor of the Frontiers Policy Labs, I, I contacted her, why don't you write a piece on it? Good. And so we started discussing yeah. a bit. and, and I learned as a policymaker that you have to materialize uh, uh, ideas. Yep. And so the 10%, 10%, 100 million, the result, it's wonderful, isn't it? is, is a very simple and very strong simple. idea. Yep, it is. And that's how we, and we, we like the idea so much that we stand here. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yeah, in a good place, right? And it also resonated. There were 52 other young scientists within the yeah. World Economic Forum yeah, exactly. who signed it, and it really resonated with them. They, rec they represent countries from all over the world. So this isn't a European thing, it's not an American it's, thing, it's, it's, it's not an Asian thing, it's, it's the whole world. This is, a, this is an issue that, and it could make a difference. <laughs> to conclude, what would you uh, wish for right now? What, what kind of collaboration or energy would you ask for? 
I would love it if we could have a really open conversation about this. And I think this needs to be with those that are leading research institutions. How can they change the context within which their scientists um, and researchers are, are working? But it also needs to come from the policy side, I think. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think what I really would like to achieve with this initiative is that we liberate the enthusiasm and the idealism that there is in the scientific population to do something real. Yep. And the main hurdle not to, to be able to get to those 100 million hours is that everything we ask now is on top of all the commitments you have in the university. I, I also That's was exactly what she said, yes, yes, <laughs> yes it's so on top of if everything. We, if, we, if we formalize this, uh, you, yeah. can, you, you, can, you can formalize it in two ways. You pay for it, yeah. but then you change the relationship. Yeah or you, you translate it into recognition. And, exactly. and that's what we want to achieve, is that, that uh, universities and funders recognize that two hours a week, symbolically, is as valid as an article. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and then wish. it becomes part of the recognition system and the reward system. It, 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 could be, it should be able, people should be able, or universities should be able to do that, right? I yes. think so. I think it's manageable. I think, it's hard. I think it's, it's possible. And I think the other thing about this is that we're not asking all scientists to do this. No. We're recognizing that as a scientific community, we need people who have yep. did lots of different things. This is just one of those things. But together, if we can do it, Thank you so much for, for talking to us in the tea talk. And I wish you all the best with that because that would, might change the culture. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for watching and being with us online.